Jeff Bezos' Project Kuiper tests over 1,000 new prototype antennas. Should SpaceX Starlink be worried? Let's go talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's a technology day. We're gonna be talking about Project Kuiper and Jeff Bezos' bull You know, I like to give you an update. The last time I did a video about this stuff, it was about five, six months ago. And I wanna bring you up to speed, what's going on. And like I just said, Project Kuiper will be testing a thousand consumer grade, let's call it antennas. So I was reading an article over on PC Magazine. I want to go through some of that with you. And then I want to give you my commentary on what I think about all of this. And then, of course, I want to hear from you down below. Do you think that Jeff Bezos' Project Kuiper is something that SpaceX Starlink should be worrying about? Let me know once again down below in the comments. What the hell's going on with my hair today? My God, I'm just unkept. Is it so big? It feels big. Is it big? Don't lie to me. I know it's big. I am unkept. Sorry, I digress. Before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, they're free. Go pick them up. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately, if not sooner. YouTube, do it, do it. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content like this, I have over 250 Starlink videos over the last 28 months. I'll put a little link over here. So when you're done watching this video, go check them out. There's a lot of good, helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind it all. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, the nice folks over at Pure VPN gave us a promotional code just for you. Use J Christina at checkout. You're gonna get an additional 15% off, or you could just simply go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Anyways, guys, let's jump right into this article now that all of the housekeeping is done. Starts out by saying, the FCC grants Amazon subsidiary company, Kuiper Systems, a temporary license to operate up to 1,000 prototype dishes for the satellite internet system, which aims to rival Starlink. Now, if you didn't know, the video that I did about five months ago, right, I was talking about how finally they were able to get a couple of satellites into orbit, prototype satellites. I call them KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2. That was right around, I believe it was like October, October 6th, if my memory serves me, right around there. Let's call it October of last year. That was the first time they got any satellites into orbit after years of trying so. And they have contracts with three different companies. You have Arian Space, you have Blue Origin, that's actually owned by Jeff Bezos himself, and you have ULA, which is United Launch Alliance. Now, Arian Space and Blue Origin, his own company, none of them were able to get a satellite into orbit, and they tried, okay? Finally, ULA put a couple of prototypes into LEO. This was a big deal. Once again, this was in October. So as of today, just to give a scope on what's going on, right? There is two, two prototype satellites from Bezos in orbit. There's two, okay? Keep that in mind. Anyways, the article starts out by saying, Amazon's Starlink rival, Project Kuiper, is going to start testing hundreds of prototype dishes to connect the company's satellite internet network. The FCC today granted Amazon subsidiary company, Kuiper Systems, a special temporary authority to operate up to 1,000 dish prototypes in various locations across the US. So it's not going to be 1,000 different prototypes to test them out. It's going to be just 1,000 prototypes, okay? Not 1,000 different, but 1,000 prototypes in different areas of the country to see how this service works 
with their two satellites. I don't get the purpose of this, but anyways, I digress. According to an application filed with the FCC, Kuiper Systems requested the license last month to validate the over-air performance of the prototype dishes before commencing product manufacturing. Makes sense to do that. Kuiper Systems plans to conduct the test over a six month period starting in April. Amazon will operate no more than 200 of the CTs or customer terminals at the same time. This is what the company added in the FCC filing. Hence, the company is close to finalizing the satellite dish design for Project Kuiper, which will beam high-speed internet to users on the ground. The company plans on beta testing Project Kuiper with early commercial customers sometime in the second half of 2024. Guys, the second half of 2024, I mean, we're in March, right? So. We have nine months left in the entire year. So second half, let's call it like six months. Let's give them six months, five months from now. They're going to beta test with commercial customers. They have two satellites up there. I mean, Elon is putting up like 23 at a time and he's launching weekly sometimes batches of these. So he's getting maybe 50, 75 up there. I mean, they were able to get two in orbit over the course of many years. I, I don't know. I, I don't get it. Maybe you guys can get it. I don't, I don't get it. Price for the service has not been revealed. There is no service. But as of a year ago, Amazon said it would offer three kinds of satellite dishes for Project Kuiper. The largest, an enterprise-grade receiver, promises to offer speeds up to one gigabits down, while the standard Project Kuiper dish will support maximum speeds of 400 megabits down and costs less than $400 to manufacture. That's not bad, actually if they actually do it. The company also plans on releasing a third model designed for portability that will offer speeds up to 100 megabits down. That's not bad. Now, my understanding was this smaller dish that they were talking about is going to be a little like eight by nine or something, a small dish, very similar to what SpaceX will be offering before the end of this year. It's something that you can slip in your backpack, pull it out, set it up with a little kickstand and boom, you have 100 megabits or whatever download speed in the middle of nowhere. Pretty damn cool. I'm going to get into that in just a second, how size does matter a little bit and I'll talk about that in just a second. Anyways, the article finalizes with this. So far, Amazon has only launched two prototype satellites for Project Kuiper. I just told you guys that. But the company plans on sending up the first production satellites for the internet system in the first half of this year. <laughs> they, don't, they got three months left. Okay. The fact that Amazon plans on testing the prototype dishes starting in April suggests the production satellites will go up soon. Okay. So they're ready to launch supposedly production quality or production models of satellites with only two beta test models currently up there. Okay. If you guys can do it, more power to you. I think it's awesome. But once again, round robining to what I said before, how many are they going to be able to get up in the next six months? I mean, his own company, Bezos' own company, Blue Origin, cannot get a satellite into orbit. Arian Space, who they also contracted, cannot get a satellite into orbit. So who do you have left? You have ULA, and that is it. Now, like I told you in that past video, there are a bunch of shareholders. I got, I'm not going to get into it in this video. There's a bunch of shareholders that were putting together a lawsuit against Jeff Bezos and the company that's basically stating that Bezos has a chip on his shoulder and he really needs to get a ride share from Elon Musk so that we can now get some money back from all of the money that we are investing in this project. By Bezos not asking Elon Musk for the ride share, he is inhibiting, he is preventing Project Kuiper from ever going live. I don't care what this article says, I don't care what they believe or anyone else believes, I'm telling you, just think about it. Even if they were to get 150 satellites up there this year, which will never happen, let's just say, he's got 150 satellites, what is he gonna do with that, all right? 
That's just a couple of satellites going at 17,000 miles per hour around the planet. It's not like one geosatellite that sits in one spot all the time, beaming its data and receiving its data from 36,000 kilometers. No, it's satellites spinning around at 17,000 miles per hour, and they're not very many overhead, and they're not overhead for a very long time. So what kind of service are you going to get? I mean, just think about it. It's just, it, it's just perplexing to me. All right. It doesn't make any sense. And if it makes sense to you, please let me know. What do you think about this? Do you think that Bezos is going to be able to get either Arian Space or his company, Blue Origin, to put a satellite into space anytime soon? Eh, I don't know. I think he's going to be dependent, reliant on ULA and how fast they can turn these rockets over. And using history, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, ULA will probably turn one over maybe once a month. How many are they going to stick into that fairing? Let's say 20 satellites, 30 satellites, even at once a month, six months. Let's say, let's give them 30. That's 180 satellites. Now, coming back to the size of the dish, I always like to give you a little bit of information, right? This is supposed to be like edutainment, right? Not like a news report. Some people are like, why don't you just get to the point faster? If you want faster, just go to CNN, all right? Watch one of, this is a vlog. We're just talking and hanging out here, right? Anyways, I always like to school you a little bit, right? Now, the size of the dish does matter. And that's why when you see the commercial dish, they're so big, they're like 22 inches by 20 inches, right? They're massive in comparison to ours that are only like 20 inches by like 15 inches. And now they're gonna be making a dish that's like the size of an iPad, a little seven by eight or something like that, small, 10 inch max, I don't know, little. The same thing what Project Kuiper is speculating doing eventually one day with their portable unit. Now, these are phased array antennas. People ask me in the past, like, well, how does it actually track the satellite? And does the size matter? Well, starting out with how it tracks. As a phased array antenna, the way it tracks is you have all of these elements, let's say on the flat panel of that dish. And those elements now change the direction where they're pointing, not by changing the direction of the dish. It doesn't work like that. It changes dynamically. It adjusts the timing of the signals using what is called constructive interference, where it's interfering with the beam, all right? And now directing it or bending it. Think of it this way. If all elements were on simultaneously in the same phase, okay, it would be like shining a flashlight into space, right? But as you manipulate, dynamically manipulate this timing of each one of them, you can adjust where it is pointing. Hence, that's how it tracks the satellites without having to move the dish. Now, when you have more elements, you are getting more data in and you can adjust that tracking a little bit better, let's say, all right? Also, by getting more data in, that's why we see the commercial grade, the big ass units getting less rain fade in comparison to the standard smaller units. So the smaller units are going to be susceptible to rain fade where the bigger ones are going to be less susceptible. Also, what is interesting here, and a lot of people don't know, and I figure I'd share it with you, is when you hear that the Starlink or Project Kuiper, whatever, their antenna is able to see a 110 degree angle or a 100 degree angle, 120 degree angle, whatever. I think Starlink is around 110 to 120 degrees, right? That's what it's seeing. Well, it is seeing a 120 degrees horizontally. People think because they hear it's a cone, it's a cone. It, it's kind of not a cone. It is a cone, but it's not a circular cone, what it's seeing. Look at it this way. When you point your dish and it's pointing to the north, people are like, well, why doesn't it get the satellites overhead? You know, it's this big, 110 degrees. Well, that's not how it works. It's 110 degrees this way, but it's only about 30 degrees, maybe 40 degrees this way. You follow that? It's like a squash cone, <laughs> something like that. 
So that's why when you point it overhead, yes, it's getting this vast 120 degrees. Just think 180 degrees is a straight line. So 120 degrees is a lot. It sees a lot of space. It sees a lot of the sky. But remember, it's only seeing 30 degrees, let's call it maybe 40 degrees this way, top to bottom. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to share that with you. What do you think about this whole Bezos bullshit that I always call it? I mean, I don't know. I, I was speculating last year that he will shut down this project before it goes live. And the reason why I was speculating this is because he just is so pigheaded that he will not, he will not just allow his company to use Elon Musk for anything, right? He just has this, this thing, billionaire to billionaire thing, this rivalry. Now, I was hearing at the end of last year that supposedly he is going to contract now with Elon Musk for certain missions a few or whatever he was saying. And I almost feel like he did that just to appease, all right, the shareholders that were going to sue him. I just don't think he's going to use Elon Musk. And in so doing, the project will eventually die. Now, if it doesn't die, we are not going to see any type of Project Kuiper in our homes or offices any time in the near future, not at all in 2024. And I think in 2025, he will be hard pressed to be able to give a consumer grade production model to any of us, even before the end of 2025. I just don't see it. 2026, maybe. And it really is going to depend on how many satellites he can get up there and how quickly. What will be the cadence? We see the cadence of SpaceX. Those satellites are flying, literally, it's 23 from, from Florida, it's another 23 over there in California, it's a 23, 20, it's just constant. Sometimes there'll be three launches in a day. Holy crap, that is a lot of launches, right? That is a lot. And all of the new satellites that are going up, they all have the E-Node Bs built in. I told you about that in a past video. The Eno beads are basically a transmitter, let's say, on board these satellites that turn the satellites also into wireless cell towers so that you can use your phone outside connecting directly to the satellite without having any Wi-Fi, without having any cell towers near you directly to a satellite, almost like the Iridium things, like the old sat phones you'd pay like $1,500 a month for some crazy crap. Remember those? Anyways, guys, what do you think? Down below, let's have this discussion. Do you think this is going to be something that'll be viable soon? Do you think that I'm just wet behind the ears? I'm just completely off here? Or do you think that they're gonna go out of business before they even go in business or whatever? Anyways, I wanna hear from you. What do you think? Once again, if you enjoyed this, even in the least, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Share it with your family, friends, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook. Share it all over the place so we can grow this channel. I would really appreciate that. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my merch and my tees and all the rest of this stuff. Pick something up if you so desire. And many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.